make sure that the policymakers actually know that uh, the consumer's voice exists. We are engaging with the members of the European Parliament, so let's make every life count. But I think it showcases that it's important that papers stay together. Really important is that we have free available resources for activists. Hello world, welcome to the Vaping Unplugged podcast. Everything you need to know about vaping and tobacco harm reduction. Hello and welcome to Vaping Unplugged. This week we have a special episode because we brought the team together and we will talk about current vaping affairs and what the WVA is up to. We will start with Lisa today. Um, hey Lisa. Hey. Uh, will you tell us a little bit about, uh, about our current campaigns and what is the biggest issue we're working on right now? Absolutely. So I want to tell you about the biggest running campaign at the moment, uh, which the whole WVA team is working on. Um, I don't know if our listeners know, but 700,000 lives are lost in the EU due to smoking. And now that the EU is um, reviewing the tobacco products directive, there is no big hopes that the policies that they will be pushing uh, will be uh, pro-vaping or pro-harm reduction. Sadly, there is an expectation that they might be pushing more restrictions uh, on vaping. So in order to let them know that we are here, the vapors, here is our voice and we actually care about um, uh, vaping being included in a harm reduction strategy. We came up with this petition and uh, we are running the petition and trying to gather the signatures from the EU citizens so that we later on submit it um, to the uh, petition committee in the EU Parliament and uh, make sure that the policymakers actually know that uh, the consumer's voice exists and that vaping has saved many lives and is helping people to uh, quit smoking and actually um, uh, make sure to prevent them from the potential risks they might be facing as smokers. So uh, this is the largest campaign right now. And I'm very thrilled to say that we have gathered more than 26,000 signatures now, which I think is very impressive and also showcases that there are people who care about these issues and they should be heard and their voices should be heard. And it will force politicians to listen to us finally. And the basic demands of the peti petition are no to flavor bans, embracing harm reduction um, and risk-based regulations, so what, which also includes um, taxation according to the, the risk level. Um, and I think with 26,000 people supporting this, and we are still collecting more signatures, so if you haven't done yet, sign up. Um, we will send a very powerful message to the today. Absolutely, to the I'm sure, I'm sure. And I hope there are even more people out there who haven't signed the petition yet and want to participate or want to spread the word. So feel free to do so and go to our website or just follow us on Twitter and look at the things what, that we're doing. I think it's very important. So this Every Life Count campaigns obviously is centered for consumers, but we want to influence policy decisions and forcing politicians to listen to us. Um, and therefore, obviously, the main target is the European Parliament. And Julia, you deal a lot with uh, members of the European Parliament and the processes there. Um, maybe you give us a quick update what we did so far and what we plan to do in the Parliament in the future with this campaign. Yes, so uh, lately WVA has been uh, going on the policy uh, outreach trips to Brussels quite often. We are engaging with the members of the European Parliament. Uh, we told them actually about the petition and the campaign that uh, we are collecting signatures. They are really impressed with how many people are supporting the initiative, how many people um, are responding and don't want to have uh, the worst regulation for uh, less harmful products. Um, we are going to submit the petition to the Petty Committee with the new parliament because now European Parliament is moving uh, into elections on the 6th to 9th of June. So um, there is going to be work for uh, during April as well. But then, um, <clears throat> uh, meanwhile, WVA will be collecting signatures and then submitting it to the parliament starting from September when we are back to Brussels. And I think it's also really important to know that there is still lack of knowledge and understanding of the technology uh, and the 
um, innovation that vaping brings um, to uh, for smokers who want to quit and we still have to keep pushing and keep providing fact sheets, keep providing research, keep providing clarifications. Um, so all of the things that WVA is doing with the um, resource center, we have uh, clearing the air, the amazing fact sheet with all of the resources and all the research available on the topic of uh, nicotine, on the topic of uh, flavors, on the topics of um, understanding uh, the consequences of flavor bans or of raising taxes. Uh, so I highly encourage everyone to actually go on WBA, WBA's website and download this fact sheet and share it with your politicians in your countries. Um, because we keep seeing around Europe so much more regulation coming out of member states. For example, Slovenia just banned uh, flavors <coughs> for e-cigarettes except for tobacco and menthol. Luxembourg is proposing to have a higher tax on uh, vaping products. Uh, Spain is also rolling out a uh, prevention of a uh, smoking plan uh, with new regulations on advertising, on uh, uh, sale of products, uh, on places where you can uh, where you cannot smoke or vape. So I think that it's really important for all of us to keep uh, educating our politicians so that when we are talking about the new tobacco products directive, so that the rules also include vapors and uh, the needs of vapors and smokers. Yeah, and I think we have on the, on the one side um, some MEPs who are very um, knowledgeable and in favor of harm reduction and then obviously on the other side some who want to ban it and hate it but the vast majority is this middle um, block where they just don't know enough about about the actual harms or not harms um, and consequences to regulate it the wrong way and i think therefore also this petition is really powerful now we have 26,000 signatures but let's hope we can increase the number even more because then that is a, a, a good example for politicians that they should listen to us and that people care about this topic. Um, so let's push it up and uh, get more numbers and then what do you think could be the, the outcome or in the best case world what would be the outcome when we have the new parliament and we bring the petitions to them? I think that the petition is a very powerful way to show uh, the voices of vapors and I think that once we are ready to present the petition to the members of the European Parliament and they see the, this vast amount of support uh, and the voices of people, I really want to believe that uh, they would start then listening also to the materials that WVA is sharing with the politicians, uh, that they will pay attention to the research, to the, to the topic generally. Um, and then I would really hope that the TPD uh, would acknowledge that vaping and e-cigarettes and other nicotine containing products, that they are um, a very helpful tool to help smokers quit and I really would love to see this um, in the regulation because then this regulation spreads to all EU member states and also to everyone who uh, is close as strategic partner of the EU. Um, so we are talking about the impact of the regulation, uh, not only for 27 countries, but to so many more. Indeed, indeed. To sum it up, we vape, we vote. So exactly. they should listen to us. <laughs> Precisely. Thank you. Halika, welcome Hi, on Vaping Unplugged. Um, Thank you. So obviously we do the petition collection, but that's not all of the Every Life Counts campaign. We also have the ambassador program and maybe you give a general introduction to the program and then how it ties into Every Life Counts campaign as well. Of course. Um, thank you so much for having me here and I'm glad to give an update about our ambassador program. Um, ambassador program is designed basically for a vape shop, vape shop owner. So if you are one, please, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll provide all the information. And we're always looking forward to um, expanding our network. Um, uh, of our ambassadors and uh, obviously empowering everyone to um, get involved in the campaigns or everything that's going on um, locally, globally as well. And as part of our Every Life campaigns um, efforts, we are also touring um, Europe, European cities. We've been in already uh, six cities, uh, starting from Spain, we've been to Bucharest and many more. And uh, we already have more than 25 ambassadors signing up 
from this um, tour, uh, but we have a lot more planned till the end of the year. Um, we have uh, so many cities we, we want to go to, so many people we want to meet and uh, vape shops to visit. So I'll, I'll tell you the nearest ones that we have upcoming. Till the end of March, we are going to visit Vilnius and Riga. Then uh, April 4 to 6, we're going to be in Tallinn. Uh, April 9 to uh, 11th, we'll be in Amsterdam and 12 to 13th in Rotterdam. Obviously, there's a lot more planned after that till the end of the year. So if we're coming to your city and you would like to meet us, please let us know. We'll be more than happy and uh, we're really looking forward to um, uh, meeting new um, ambassadors and uh, um, expanding our network this way. And uh, as it, it has been mentioned, we already have more than 26,000 signups um, for our petition, which is awesome. And uh, let's make every life count. Yeah, and I think the, the way we, we started the ambassador program was with the idea that vape shops are always a bit in between consumers mm -hmm. and industry mm -hmm. and they are the perfect multipliers to, for exactly. us to the consumer. So um, I think they play an important role and that's why I'm so happy that we have this program to, to reach the customers, for, especially now for this petition. And maybe one number which is missing, how many ambassadors do we have overall worldwide at the Overall, moment? we have more than 400. Nice. So it's already a growing network of shops um, yes. and we hope that they will help us to spread the message of harm okay. reduction. Exactly. So now a little bit of a different um, topic. Alberto, you worked on a separate campaign on the other side of the world. Um, maybe you give us a quick intro of what, what happened last week and, and how was it? Where were you? What did you do? Yeah, of course. So WBA was in Mexico last week. Uh, we had a protest organized there together with our partner organization of Babe Mexico. And this was because uh, a ban has been in Mexico on vaping products for two years now but the president wanted to raise it to a constitutional level, which is completely absurd, it's nonsense. And despite of this, you can find the vaping products anywhere in the black market. You just get offered them in the street, it's very easy to access them. So we had a protest there to go for a regulation. Uh, we had a Sensible lot of- Sensible regulation. Yeah, risk-based <laughs> regulation. Uh, and it was a whole success. Uh, a lot of engagement from users. We had around 300 people joining us very different uh, vapors organizations in Mexico. And then we were actually welcomed by some politicians into the Congress. They wanted to hear what we were asking for, uh, what kind of regulation we wanted to, to have there. Um, so yeah, a lot of engagement, a lot of media hits from this protest as well. So great success. Yeah, and I think it very well showcases that if vaping voices come together and raise their voices and speak out, that it can make a difference. I mean, we will see what policy-wise it's happening, but I encourage everyone to check out the pictures and videos from the protest because that was very impressive. Yes, we're gonna be posting this, and as you say, it's very important that vapors get together. Uh, they weren't having much impact on, on policies, but I think after this, uh, politicians are really gonna have to start listening to vapors' voices in Mexico because it was a, really a show of strength from the vaping community. And what, do you, what would you say was the feeling and feedback from the politicians, first, who were there and were there other reactions as well? So from the politicians that we met, they all understand that the provision is not working and that we need a sensible regulation that allows smokers to use these products to quit. Um, and we also discussed uh, vaping with the health commission which is more of a technical stuff that they have that goes through the science and they understand that vaping is less harmful than smoking but still the provision is a political decision so not really based on science uh, but we will see how this goes they are having elections in mexico now so it's going to be a long process and now it's your chance to brag as well there was some um, media attention which is also nice because it's very unusual that um, things like that get into mainstream media but you and the local partners made that happen. Yeah, there actually there were a lot of politics. Sorry, a lot of journalists covering the protest. Uh, we had, I think, close to three hundred media hits. Uh, some televisions were also there recording. So really, a huge impact. And I think it showcases that it's important that papers stay together. Yeah, so basically, if you're interested in organizing a protest in your country, please always feel free to 
reach out to WBA and especially to Alberto, who is now the protest organization master. Um, so let's do that uh, in other places around the world as well. Great. Apart from the Every Life Counts campaign, we obviously have one of our favorite countries featured all the time, namely Sweden, the country which is about to become smoke free. Um, Maria, maybe you can give a little update what we did in the last few weeks about Sweden and why this is helpful for activists and consumers. Yeah, you're right, Michael. Very good question. Like one of our um, big missions in WBA is to support activists in their efforts, in their um, tobacco harm reduction efforts, and uh, we try to support them in any way possible. And one of those um, efforts right now is that we created a resource pack um, uh, for activists free to use for them to um, highlight uh, the Swedish success and show the policymakers in their countries uh, that 5% um, smoking goal is possible uh, if they follow the Swedish uh, example. And for this on our uh, website we published the media kit, media pack, we published the how to write a press release, uh, we have a guide on how to write an effective letter to your politicians and um, Really important is that we have free available resources for activists uh, to use on social media. We have infographics that they can uh, use to uh, highlight uh, Sweden's, uh, Swedish success. Yeah, please feel free to use all this stuff. We also translated a lot of the statistics and numbers where Sweden is doing um, well in many different languages. I think it was 15 or 20 yeah. uh, languages. Um, applied it to a lot of countries um, to showcase politicians that actually the harm reduction model works since Sweden is a real life example um, and let's not ignore it anymore and I think that also ties in very well with the Every Life Counts campaign where we try to, to convince the EU to actually follow the Swedish um, model so let's hope people are using it and are happy uh, to learn more about Sweden where can they find this stuff? Uh, on our website, in the research center, all the resources are available for free. Fantastic. And this time I'm alone. Uh, thank you for your attention to this special episode. We wanted to give you a very brief update what the WVA is up to. And since we finally have our team together from all over the world, um, I think it was a very good overview what we do. So please support us, sign our petition if you haven't done so and follow us on all our social media channels to stay up to date and hopefully see you next week again for the next Vaping Unplugged podcast.